Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today, once again, we are uh, taking a low-tech approach to uh, creating this uh, tutorial video. I'm using my document camera and my physical math journal uh, to uh, help demonstrate estimating angle measures. I'm in my math journal, uh, volume 2, pages 182 and 183, uh, lesson 11 from unit 5. Okay? Now, on the left-hand side of page 182, I have this circle that I can use to model building angles. I actually am going to start out with a photocopy so that that page will lay flat on my desk here. Okay. Now the instructions read, connect two straws with a twist tie, bend the twist tie at the connection to form a vertex. So I happen to have two straws and a twist tie uh, that I can connect together like so. And by doing so, I create a vertex that makes an angle. Now I know what you're thinking. Mr. Wasserman, I'm at home watching this on YouTube. Um, I don't have straws laying around my house. You know, single-use straws are such a bad thing for the environment. All that plastic. We don't use them. Okay? Or maybe you're thinking to yourself, Mr. Wasserman, I don't have any twist ties around the house. Uh, we don't buy loaves of bread anymore. Uh, being quarantined at home uh, for COVID uh, drove us stir crazy, so we made all this artisanal sourdough bread, and now we've got bread for days. I don't need to buy bread to get the twist ties from the package. Well, it doesn't have to be straws, friends. Any two straight objects that would... Uh, 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 duplicate a line segment or be a proxy for it will work. Like for example, a pair of spoons would serve as two line segments. Or maybe some popsicle sticks. Oh, you've got some popsicles in your freezer and you have to eat two of them to, in order to be able to uh, participate in this activity. Or maybe you're like me and you have all kinds of Legos at home so you can just pick two long Lego bricks that you can use as these line segments. Okay, whatever you're using, two straight objects, pencils, you know, uh, markers, whatever you got laying around, that's straight will work. Okay, so it says place the straws, air quotes, uh, with the vertex on the center of the circle. So we have the center point here. I'm just going to put one end of each Lego brick right here, touching the center. And it says, place both straws pointing to the zero. So I would have to layer them like that. If I was using my spoons, my spoons would spoon, right? Two spoons, one on top of the other, they're spooning, okay? Well, whatever I'm using, I'm going to start out at zero degrees, right? But then, to make an angle, I'm going to keep one of these straight objects that is uh, simulating a line segment or simulating a straw and I'm going to move the other one, keeping the ends touching that center point, okay? So I've now created an angle, okay? Now the measure of this angle is, I don't know, probably about 45 degrees, not 100% sure, but I do know that it would be labeled as a acute angle. An acute angle is any angle that is more than zero, meaning more than this, and uh, less than 90 degrees, okay? Now, a 90-degree angle makes that uh, a nice, solid, square corner, right? This would be a 90-degree angle. So anything less than that would be acute. Oh, look at it. It's so small. It's so cute. So little. It's acute. But once I get to uh, 90 degrees, it's a right angle, okay? Only 90 degrees is considered to be a right angle because it makes that square corner. Now, if I go beyond 90 degrees, like 91, 95, 100, and so forth, I now have created an obtuse angle. Obtuse angles are between the range of 91 and 180. And when I get an angle that's 180 degrees, it no longer looks like an angle. It looks like a straight line or a longer line segment. But the measure from this point on my circle going around half the distance would be... 180 degrees. If I start off with my clock at noon and my minute hand goes halfway around the clock face to 1230, okay, I have gone 180 degrees around my clock dial, okay? Now beyond 180 degrees, like that, is what we would consider a reflex 
angle, a reflex angle. Now again, it seems like I've just made a, an obtuse angle from the other side, and technically that's true. But let's use this cap race right here to uh, point out that this is the starting point, is zero. If my cap eraser goes around and hits that halfway point at 180 degrees, any motion beyond that is more than 180 degrees. That would be considered a reflex angle. Okay. Now the uh, the uh, opposite side, this angle between on the other side of these uh, two line segments would be considered obtuse. Okay. Um, it's just a matter of perspective, to be honest. If I have a right angle right here of 90 degrees, I have a reflex angle that's on the outside of these two line segments that would be 270 degrees, okay? But it all depends on where you start and where your uh, second line segment array ends up, okay? So we can manipulate uh, these pieces to help us visualize these different kinds of angles. So now let's get to our assignment on page 183, okay? I have six angles down at the bottom, okay? A through F, and I know that they're angles A through F because they label the vertex, the point down at the bottom, okay? So what would be the measure of angle A, okay? So the instructions say look at the angle, decide whether it's acute, right, obtuse, or reflex. Estimate the measurement of each angle in degrees, okay? So again, when we're thinking about angles, okay, we have a couple of different labels we can give them, and then we have to kind of guesstimate about how big we think these angles are, okay? So let's take a look at A. Now, A looks like the letter V from this vantage point, but when I turn my notebook about 45 degrees, I can see that this angle looks like a right angle, a 90 degree angle, okay? So that angle A would be considered a right angle. Okay, so when I go to complete my uh, complete my work, I'm going to take my pen. I'm going to write it, angle A is a right angle, give or take. Okay, because again, what we're doing here is we are estimating. Okay, it may be 89 degrees, it may be 92 degrees. I'm not quite sure, but it's about 90 degrees. Okay, now. Angle B, on the other hand, is a lot smaller than angle A. And again, if I turn my notebook around and orient it so that the first ray is pointing up relative to how I'm looking at the paper at that zero degree mark, my second ray kind of swings a little bit to down towards the right but doesn't quite get to 90 degrees. It looks to be about half of a 90 degree angle. Again, I'm, I'm guessing here, but it looks to be about 45 degrees, which would make it an acute angle. So angle B would be considered acute. And again, I'm saying it's about 45 degrees. Okay, since I'm estimating round numbers that end in zero or five would be the norm, okay? And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna look at each one of these angles at the bottom of page 183 and just guess, okay? I'm going to apply what I know about acute, right, obtuse, and reflex angles. I'm going to look at the shape of the angles. I'm also going to pay attention to the uh, location of the arcing arrows, okay, these lines that make curves. So you notice, for example, on C, that the arching uh, semicircle of an arrow here is on this outside, so it goes beyond that 180 degree mark, okay? The directionality, or where your starting point is for your angles, like in this one for C, or this one here for F, or this one here for E, if I can get it in the shot, will determine which kind of angle we're talking about. The, the measure of the angle outside of these two rays would be reflex. If I was looking at the measure of the angle inside these two rays, that would be more of an acute angle. Okay? These estimations are going to help us 
be more specific as we learn to use a protractor and to get to uh, measuring to the nearest degree. At this point right, right now, we just want you in the ballpark, okay? Uh, if you have questions about angles, acuteness, obtuseness, or anything else having to do with uh, these geometric properties, uh, you know what to do. If you've been watching my videos uh, at this point, you've probably heard me say time and again, talk to your math teacher. You know, I am happy to make these videos for you to watch, uh, but I am not responsive to your needs. Your teacher, who's a living, breathing person, is. So please make sure that if you have questions, if you don't understand, that you ask for help. That's how you get better at anything. Okay? Uh, until we meet again, friends, good luck and have a good day. Thanks.